Indra CIE Limited Q3 CY 2022 Post Results Conference Call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Basudev Banerjee from ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, thanks to uh, Mahindra CI Management for giving us the opportunity to host the call. Uh, we have with us uh, uh, Mr. Ander Alvarez, CEO of Mahindra CI, Mr. K. Jayaprakash, CFO, Mr. Vikas Sinha, Senior Vice President Strategy, Mr. Oroiz Lafoyne, uh, Business Controller, and uh, Swapnil Chaudhagar, uh, DTM Strategy. So uh, over to you, Vikas, for uh, your initial comments, and we'll take the call ahead accordingly. Yeah, thanks, Vasudev. Uh, good evening, everyone, and good afternoon to those who are joining from Europe. I welcome you all on this call, as also our CEO, Ander. Uh, uh, thank you for attending the call, despite uh, a relatively late starting time, especially for Asian investors. Uh, sorry for the quick turnaround between results and call. We won't make this a practice. Uh, we start with an overview of the legal structure of MCIE. We would like to point out that during this quarter, CIE has bought out some of M&M's stake in MCIE, and consequently, CIE's stake has gone up from 63.44% to 65.71%, while that of M&M has come down to 9.25% as against 11.43% earlier. This move again reiterates CIE management's strong belief in the growth opportunities available in the Indian market and the fact that they look towards MCI to continue outpacing the market. Let us now move on to uh, Q3 uh, C22 results for MCI, which is on page seven of our investor presentation. Uh, Q3 C22 sales for India were at rupees 14,294 million, which represents uh, a 34% growth uh, compared to Q3 C21 and a 12% growth versus uh, sequentially versus Q2 C22. Uh, uh, like uh, the last few quarters, the revenue growth rates are higher than the underlying market growth rates. MCI India EBITDA margin in Q3 C22 is 15%, despite the adverse impact of uh, commodity prices, RM prices. Uh, as also an increase in the cost of energy in Maharashtra, where many of our plants are located. EBIT was at 11.4%, which is better than both year-on-year 10.8% -year and sequentially 11.1%. Uh, uh, in India, the month of September has seen good sales across all segments, especially four-wheelers, and we largely expect this trend to continue. The festival sales are also going well. However, historically, due to the cyclicality in the tractor demand, we could see slight slowdown uh, after the festive period in this segment. <coughs> Sorry. On page 8, we have the Q3 C22 results for MCI Europe. Sales were at 11,632 million, plus 28% versus Q3 C21, and a little lower versus Q2 C22. Uh, but we have to remember that roughly three-fourths of August is closed in Europe, so about 20 days uh, uh, is not there in this, uh, in this quarter. And of course, in this quarter, there were headwinds on RM prices and unprecedented energy cost rise, uh, and of course, the effect of uh, uh, the usual uh, August holidays that we talked about. Uh, and also, we would like to mention that in this quarter, there was a negative exchange rate translation impact of about 11%. So on a euro basis, we have grown by 39% year on year. Uh, uh, the sales drop compared to Q2 C22 was 9%, which is explained by uh, you know, all the factors that I talked about. Uh, the EBITDA margin in MCI Europe in Q3 C22 was 10%. This margin is lower sequentially than Q2 C22. Of course, uh, some of it is attributable to the seasonal drop in sales explained above. 
uh, and also the energy price increase. Uh, we are confident that just like the energy impact in Q1 C22, we'll be partially able to get uh, some of these increases through our customers in the coming quarters. On the demand side, even though the customer schedules have not decreased, it is very uncertain as to what impact energy prices will have in Q4C22 due to the Ukraine war situation. And now if we go to page 9, we will see the consolidated Q3C22 results, which are a combination of the India and Europe results. Q3C22 consolidated sales were Rs 25,927 million plus 31% versus Q3C21 and plus uh, 1% uh, uh, versus Q2C22. Uh, this, you know, this quarter represents, uh, you know, one of the highest ever quarterly sales that we have we have had and the other aspect that we would like to point out that now India is uh, much uh, much higher than the 50% mark that we are talking about in the total consolidated sales in this quarter. Consolidated EBITDA margin in Q3C22 was 12.8%. Uh, uh, consolidated EBIT margin was 9.4% uh, uh, and this consolidated EBIT margin is uh, uh, almost close to the 9.7% that we achieved in Q3 C21 and 9.8% in Q2 C22 in spite of you know all that is happening in, in Europe. Consolidated EBT uh, in Q3 C22 was Rs. 2272 million at 8.8% which is higher in absolute terms than the rupees uh, 1790 million at 9% that we achieved in Q3 C, uh, C21. C uh, In fact, if you see profits in absolute terms are increasing, Q3 C22 consolidated EBT is 27% uh, higher than the corresponding quarter last year in spite of the uh, margin changes. On page 11, we have the 9-month C22 results for MCI India. Sales were uh, 39,109 million, EBITDA 15%, EBIT 11.2%. Page 12, we have nine month C22 MCI Europe results. Sales were uh, 36,871 million. Again, India is uh, much higher than Europe. Uh, EBITDA at 10.6% and EBIT at 7.5%. Consolidated nine month uh, uh, sales was rupees 75, uh, you know, almost 76 billion rupees. EBITDA at 12.9% and EBIT at 9.4% uh, EBT. So we have uh, a solid company performance despite the complicated scenario in Europe. Uh, we believe geographical diversification and, and an empowered management at local levels is helping us deliver these results. Uh, you know, these two factors are some of the key features of CIE strategic philosophy and we'll continue to work along these lines. So with that, I close my remark. We wish everyone on the call a very happy Diwali and a prosperous new year in advance. May the festival spirit uplift our, in, our industry. And let's now proceed to Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. <coughs> Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have our first question from the line of Jinesh Gandhi from Motilal Oswal Financial Services Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, firstly, can you talk about the impact of energy prices in Europe in this quarter and what we expect uh, in coming quarter? Yeah. Okay. And uh, good afternoon, everybody. This is Sander Arena speaking. Okay. The energy prices during the third quarter this year were the highest energy prices we have ever seen okay even higher than the worst moment when the war uh, in in ukraine started in end of february beginning of march okay 
uh, at that time the energy the electricity price for example went up to something like 300 euros per megawatt in, in March uh, 2022 and in July August we have been hitting 400 euros per megawatt okay that has been the huge peak that we have been suffering in in all the uh, European countries okay different in in each country but average it w would be like that okay even in in Germany we were uh, touching 700 euros per megawatt in certain days. Uh, this situation, of course, is not sustainable and hopefully the, the trend has been uh, going down and we have seen a cool off of the energy prices during September and October uh, up to these 250, 300 euros per megawatt where we are now, okay? Uh, we have been dealing with all the customers uh, to pass through. I mean, we have reached agreements with all of them to to pass through partially this this impact. And that's how we are uh, trying to, to manage this situation. Of course, there is a delay in the application of this of these agreements. So we will see a certain uh, or you saw certain impact on the q3 uh, margins and we expect to recuperate uh, at least partially uh, in the next quarters okay, but that is the the impact in the of the energy prices in europe in all the industry and i would say in all economy has been uh, really really uh, terrible Okay, but can you quantify impact in CQ uh, in for the European operation? How uh, how much uh, uh, margins were impacted just because of the energy cost inflation? Okay, we we have had uh, okay depending on each of the technologies, uh, we have uh, different impacts. But uh, generally, uh, we can you can consider that uh, the energy impact in certain uh, products where we have the heat treatments plus the heating of the forging operation and could go up to more than 10 percent on this uh, on the prices this is the the peak the that we can have in in certain products but uh, the real uh, impact in our pnl after negotiating and after uh, passing through can be approximately one to two percent on the on the uh, on the results on the margins. Okay, okay, got it. And uh, 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 do you also foresee a risk on uh, continuity of operations because of availability of power or energy in fourth quarter, or that uh, is definitely not a concern? Cost is the only concern. Okay, uh, in this moment we don't see that risk or we let's say that we are producing uh, normally we have availability of electricity and, and gas in all our operations in this moment there is no no signal of uh, shortage of of energy in our businesses but it, it is true that there are some rumors and some comments in the in in Europe especially in the in the northern Europe I mean uh, Germany or uh, uh, Germany Romania let's say let all, all the central Europe where it could happen that there is a lack of of gas available so that the industry could be affected okay so uh, but in this moment we don't see that from the order point of view and I think from the demand point of view from our customers we are now quite satisfied because the demand is still uh, strong they 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 keep uh, fulfilling our order book and the order book is is really strong in this moment so uh, let's see what what's going on with the with the gas situation and with the negotiations with the with the gas suppliers mainly from russia and or from the United states and also from the the Middle East, and 
we are waiting for the outcome of those of those agreements okay my view is that probably there will be a certain slowdown on the economy uh, until the final solution is 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 reached but uh, in this moment as i mentioned our all our operations are running smoothly with no no problems but okay the risk and the uncertainty is there Got it, got it. And uh, you talked about uh, agreements have been reached for passing on this cost inflation. So would it be to the similar magnitude like in the recent past where uh, between 60 to 70 percent of cost inflation was uh, passed when balance was absorbed by us? Uh, is, is the magnitude of pass through similar uh, uh, this time as well? Yes, the magnitude is similar to those you you mentioned. Yes, in that in that range, that is the the average in the in the market yeah got it uh, and the last question before i call back in queue uh, is on the european demand side so on one side your oem customers are indicating very strong demand and on the other side if i see uh, the outlook for light vehicle production which uh, you have given from ihs uh, that talks of decline uh, in cy22 uh, as well as uh, a sub three percent CAGR over the next uh, three four years. So uh, clearly, there is a dichotomy between these two. Uh, what is your sense with respect to uh, what uh, what kind of a growth can we expect uh, in uh, Europe going forward? I mean, I presume the chip related issues are largely uh, behind us, uh, at least from 3Q onwards. Uh, so uh, how do you see growth going forward? Okay. It's the, the reality is that okay for me it's a very complex uh, question to answer because the 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 word that I used uh, more frequently in the board that we we finished some some hours ago is that the uncertainty okay the the real uncertainty that we have on one hand we see the our customers uh, they are continuing pushing us to to produce and to let's say to to launch the raw material orders because they will need uh, uh, the products they will need the parts uh, in the next month and our order books our edis are uh, are full and and the the demand are is really strong on the other hand we also see that there is the market signs that okay there w could be an energy shortage so that could affect the industry so there is a risk of that uh, could happen so that's where we are now trying to to navigate okay in in this uncertainty my view my my personal view is that the the uh, automotive industry in europe in the last three years has been uh, completely depressed i mean especially the european after the covid when we were at approximately 15 million cars uh, in europe in the covid year in 2020 the following year due to the semiconductors we were also at 15 million cars in uh, this year 2022 because of the war because of the energy whatever we are again at 15 million cars so we are in a depressed uh, mode in this moment okay so i we, i think we can only go uh, up and i will i expect to have a recovery as ihs said in the last report of seven percent eight percent of growth for 2023 so my expectation is that hopefully the the, the market will go up uh, and will recuperate in the next years. Yes. Uh, got it. Got it. I'll, I'll, thanks. I'll fall back in queue. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. We have our next question from the line of Nikhil Kali from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you for taking my question. <clears throat> Congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, can you help us? I think in the previous quarters you have talked about uh, constant RM growth. Uh, revenue growth with constant RM. So, can you just uh, help us with the numbers for this quarter? Yeah. Okay. In in India, we had a raw material 
growth, uh, uh, growth coming from the raw material with 6% uh, approximately, and in, in Europe, 15%. Okay, that's the, the figures that we had. So, okay, so this is RM impact, or positive impact. That's right. Those are positive impacts because of the higher raw material price year on year. Yeah. And the oh, exchange oh. impact also, no, and of 11% for Europe. Exchange. Yes, and that's also additional yes. impact. Yes. 11% in Europe. And, and we have 11% negative due to the currency in Europe. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, very clearly you are seeing really strong outperformance versus the industry. Uh, so just if you could just provide color, I mean, uh, which segments are you seeing, especially in Europe? Uh, is it, I mean, uh, what would be the revenues of Metal Castello? I think there we are running at full capacity. Uh, so maybe just some color on the PV forgings and Metal Castello and also on the truck forgings. Yes, uh, Metal Castello is working at, at full rate in this moment. Uh, as, as we mentioned in the previous call, Metal Castello is doing really well, and, and most of our Metal Castello production goes to uh, to the U.S. The U.S. market is still pushing very, very hard, and we are working uh, 24 hours, seven days. Okay, so and we are adding uh, capacity to fulfill the the demand. So in that sense, yes, uh, in Europe, one of the Winners is uh, our Metal Castello company evolution. Regarding uh, the passenger car forging, yes, also the the trend is also very strong, and we we are selling uh, at a very high rate in in this summer time. You know that usually in uh, in summer uh, we have the summer holidays where the, our customers stop about three weeks completely and. This year we have seen we were expecting probably a higher drop, but in in fact the demand was really strong, and you can see in the figures that we were uh, about in in euros 39% above last year uh, in Q3. Okay, so yes, the the evolution is really really strong. Part of this 39% of growth is coming from the raw material, as, as I stated before, approximately 15%. But uh, we can consider that passenger car is doing also really well. And, and the commercial vehicle sector also grew and also showed certain uh, good performance. Probably is more cyclical, and we expect a certain decline in the in the in the next quarters, and we could foresee that. But uh, overall, I think the, the market continues quite strong. OK, but just coming to the CV forging part, I think you're seeing really strong growth. But at the same time, we've been talking about scaling down that business uh, over a medium to longer term. So how, does, how do both these things now kind of uh, uh, play out in your plans? Yeah, the, the, the point of this business, you know that the CV fortunes in, in Europe is is uh, has the less profitable business that uh, Machinda CIE has uh, worldwide. This business, this poor pr profitability uh, is affected also uh, negatively in a really high inflation scenario and also with a high raw material plus energy price increases. So the, the evolution of, the, of this business is more and more difficult. Okay, So that's why we rather prefer to slow down rather than growing and having uh, additional difficulties. So uh, our strategy there is to we continue trying to improve the business and trying to to get the maximum efficiency. On one hand, on the other hand, of course, we need we have no chance than passing through the, the cost increases to the customers. In this business, we cannot accept 60 or 70 percent of pain sharing because then we would be in a negative point. So we need to be we have no chance than being more aggressive to, to pass through these cost increases. Okay, so that is the the reality of this business. So in the Future, we will decide. Uh, we will have to decide 
what will be the strategic route for this for this business so for the time being can we just assume maybe growth will be in line with how the mcv industry in europe kind of pans out it will continue to grow at similar levels so growth in uh, germany yes will it be in line with cv industry growth no probably what we will see in in germany uh, will be a, a lower growth than the uh, market growth okay we will probably uh, reduce certain products where we are not profitable so uh, we will see a certain reduction in the in the turnover okay oh, thank you thank you thank you thank you Reminder to participants to press star and one to ask a question. We have our next question from the line of Abdullah Salmani from Metaverse Equity Funds. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, actually, uh, my question is related to uh, war only. Uh, I mean, in the aftermath of uh, the Ukraine war and China, uh, how will uh, your business strategy change prior to the war and post? how has the ukraine war changed our business strategy okay in fact we we have not changed uh, strongly our our strategy because uh, cie's strategy has been always be uh, local to local supply okay uh, we prefer to produce in america what we sell in america produce in europe what we sell in europe and produce in asia what we uh, we sell in in asia okay that's the strategy so we we keep this this strategy now also because of the environmental requirements and and uh, more stringent targets that we have we are also trying to avoid unnecessary logistic uh, cost and emissions so in that sense this local to local strategy is reinforced uh, considering that we are a global company and we have uh, our uh, let's say we are positioned in all the automotive markets around the world i think this is the proper approach uh, and that's exactly what we are now perceiving from our customers so our customers they are now more and more looking for this this strategy that i think is more sustainable and uh, avoid logistic costs currency exchange costs or risks uh, emissions and also geopolitical tensions that okay time to time happen and uh, we know that this can disrupt and or break the supply supply chains around the world okay so I think that that is the strategy so we will reinforce our presence in in India to grow in locally and to produce locally what we sell here and also we will keep the the European business and the Mexican business and the American business there in order to to supply locally to all the all the markets that's the strategy there is no no big changes in in our view because we all we had had this this strategy from the beginning okay we just got it but uh, thank you for taking my question yeah thanks for the thank you very much thank you we have a next question from the line of bharat sheet from quest investment advisors private limited please go ahead hi and thank you very much for opportunity and a good set of num congratulations on good set of number of the whole cit and that earlier we had moved some of i mean uh, one order from national castle to india around 5 million so how that has gone successfully and are we seeing some of these uh, us business order so to metal castle to transferring to indian manufacturing so what is the strategy over there yeah yes we have transferred part of the production from metal castle to to india and due to many different reasons okay first reason is that the final customer was located in india so it makes sense 
as I told before, the local to local approach, I think it makes sense to produce those parts in India. And secondly, also because of the uh, lack of capacity and the, the, let's say, the bottleneck that we have in Metal Castello, Italy, so that also made <laughs> or make pressure to us to move this uh, production to India. So we have done this, this transfer, the transfer was successful and we are producing in in India uh, with normality to the to the final customer. So uh, also, it's important to say that we have had uh, during these years we have done the the technology transfer from Italy to to India, and now we are producing really complex parts in India, and we have now the knowledge, we have the the machinery to to produce the the same kind of products that we produce in Italy. We can produce them also in India. So this process is is ongoing and is ongoing successfully. So both the gears division in both regions is doing fantastically. So in future, do we expect, I mean, uh, to uh, get more gear, gear business because the way, I mean, capacity constraint we are facing in Metal Castello to transferring into India. And is that, how big is the opportunity? Okay. Uh, in, in this moment, also in India, uh, we have, let's say, certain bottlenecks because of the uh, capacity constraints. Not exactly in this moment, because the, you know, the tractor business is now uh, quite uh, low, and we we produce a lot of gears in India for the tractor business. But once the tractor business come up, that will come for sure. Uh, our capacities in, in India are also limited. So our plan is to continue investing and growing in India, and we, we have our uh, plans to expand our gear division in, in India, and also uh, we have plans to, to, to build new, new plant to continue our growth trend and take the opportunities that we have in the market in this moment. Okay? So, not necessarily transferring from from Metal Castello. Some of the products could be transferred from from uh, Italy to India if it makes sense. But the the real the current market in in India is giving us enough opportunities to to continue our growth in India with the, with, without the need of transferring production from Italy. Okay, thank you. And second question now, ice visa we. Ice engine is a EV. So Europe and India, how we are, I mean, the things are playing out. And second thing, what we have been listening that some of the people, I mean, uh, powertrain manufacturers are reducing crankshaft capacity or transferring to other products. And so, but ice business, so how do we see a gaining a market share on in the ice business over time? Okay. In in Metal Castello, as as we have already explained in in previous calls, we got new businesses from electric vehicles, very large business that we have now uh, let's say increased. I mean, we have been nominated for additional electric vehicle uh, products. So uh, we see uh, the trend clearly, uh, and and the new orders are now uh, more and more coming from the EVs and the hybrid uh, vehicles. So in that sense, in Metal Castello, the transition is, will be absolutely natural because the, the, the market is pushing us to, do, to, those, to the, that kind of components. And coming back to the uh, internal, uh, let's say the rest of the forging, I mean, the, our uh, crankshaft business is not affected yet. I mean, the, we we are not affected uh, till now because the the uh, there is a due to the mix of product that we have with the mix of customers plus the the market evolution, we we don't see the reduction. But what we are now preparing ourselves is that in four five years we will probably see a decline on the demand of this kind of products and we will prepare ourselves to change our product portfolio to 
other, uh, as, as we mentioned also before, uh, about from chassis component and also aluminum fortunes and other kind of products that we are developing in this moment. So I believe that in Europe we had started, we were to start about on aluminum forging type. So where we are at this moment? Okay, we have had uh, our first orders in the aluminum forgings and we continue developing the technology plus the products and we are working on it. I mean, there is no uh, additional information that I can disclose, but we continue working on it. Okay, on India business, uh, any addition of new clients or any addition of the new business in Q3 vis a -vis earlier quarter? and how those new customers which have been added over the last 12 months is uh, performing? So any, new, uh, any new big order? Uh, no, but all, you know, in terms of uh, new capacity additions, I think capacity additions are ongoing in almost every uh, vertical there, you know, as, as we have reiterated in the past, you have magnetics where there is an expansion program uh, which will substantially increase capacity. You have a new plant at Gears, a new plant is being set up at AEL. All these are ongoing programs. You have CIE Hosur, where, you know, most of the infrastructure has been set up and f first order, you know, we have started to uh, generate revenue from that place and it is now in the process of being, uh, of being ram uh, ramped up. You had the warm forging plant, uh, which has been partially set up at, at Chakan. You know, we, we will put in more machines there. So, you know, this is the capacity addition is an ongoing process. In terms of order book, if there are any significant new orders, at this time we don't have that. Maybe we will talk about it uh, in, in, in the year-end uh, call. Uh, but we'll let you know about, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the order book uh, or the new orders generated in this year during that period. So, because my question was related to more on the new client acquisition or uh, increasing the content for vehicle from the existing client. So, if you can be a little more color on that side also. No, in terms of, uh, you know, increasing our share or having more business from our existing clients that's going on you know whether it is uh, uh, mahindra as you know mahindra is going through a lot of new model launches so we are there in all of the new model launches as also the model launches next next year in the ev space uh, same case as far as maruti is concerned uh, and also uh, you know we have a very strong situation uh, developing in tata motors also so that uh, that uh, uh, you know uh, uh, that is in the four wheeler uh, segment in the two wheeler segments we have talked about how uh, CIE Hosur we have had new orders CIE Hosur has been set up for uh, you know uh, for new orders uh, new orders that we have got uh, I think from PSA and and Royal Enfield uh, so. Uh, so uh, that is there. Uh, so we have, and uh, you know, like for example, uh, Ender talked about uh, how he's bullish about the tractor segment, which will have an impact on our plants at Rajkot and Zairabad. We are receiving, uh, you know, for the new model launches uh, by Mahindra in the tractor segment. You know, a lot of them are slated in the coming few years, not necessarily in the next few quarters. Uh, but they have a strong, uh, you know, uh, pipeline of, of that uh, there and, and, and we will be present in all of them. So to that extent, you know, uh, we are quite comfortable uh, in this area. Thank you, Vikas, and under all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and one on your phone. We have our next question from the line of Enrique from Best Inverse Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for the presentation. I have uh, several questions. The first one is uh, regarding the bottlenecks, uh, the, uh, the bottleneck constraints that you have in India. Do you foresee the need to accelerate the capex allocation in India next year? or with the ramp up of the current investment, it will be enough to, to supply the market. Thank you. 
Okay. It's true that we we have in certain businesses, in certain verticals, we are limited and we cannot continue growing if we don't uh, invest. But uh, our investment plan is uh, solid and is done from, let's say, several years ago. Okay, even in the uh, COVID year 2020, in last year 2021, and this year, we are investing heavily uh, to, let's say, prepare ourselves to uh, cope with the demand that uh, we foresee from the market. Okay, so uh, this year we are uh, investing, and in this uh, I can give you the the figure that close to till now four billion rupees on on capex. Uh, most of it is in located in India, and we are adding uh, capacity and we are adding plants in almost all the verticals. Okay, so we continue our uh, capacity expansion trend and because we we need it to, to continue growing in the market. So we expect that uh, uh, during this year we will uh, have an important uh, capex in, in India. Next year we will have again because we think that the Indian market will continue growing. And also regarding the mix of customers that we have uh, we see that uh, okay we we are growing a lot with Mahindra as as it is normal I think Mahindra is uh, doing really well and uh, the, with their products uh, with the new products they are launching they are having a big success and I think that will be a good opportunity for us to continue growing also with Tata also with uh, Maruti I think that uh, we are well located to continue our growth strategy okay so. Uh, to your question, yes, we had uh, we have had limitations, but we are now launching additional uh, additional capex aligned with the, our customers to fulfill with the demand. Okay, so the our strategy is to continue our customers as much as we can. Thank you very much. And the other two questions are regarding uh, profitability in Europe. Uh, first one should be Q4. You mentioned that uh, there has been some delays in the pass-through of energy inflation to, to some clients. So yeah. my question is, taking into, a, into consideration this pending pass-through and you know the limited uh, visibility that we have uh, on market demand, should we expect a sequencia uh, profitability improvement in Q4, taking into account yeah. this pending pass-through in yeah. Europe? Okay, if the situation of the energy uh, market is stabilized and the, the demand continues as it is now, uh, yes, we should have this, this recovery, okay? Because we will be able to recuperate what we lost in the previous quarter. The point is that we don't know what will happen with the market in the next quarter, and we don't know what will happen with the energy. Okay, so that's why I'm, I cannot say a total yes or a, or a very solid yes to your question, because it will depend on how the energy market plus the demand behaves. But but in a normality, yes, this. If you recall from the previous quarters, in in the Q1 we were negatively affected because of the of the start of the war in Ukraine and you know in February March the energy went uh, up and and we had uh, difficulties so we lost certain margins in the Q2 we recuperate now in the Q3 when as the the energy is picking up again we go down again so yeah that's the the scenario we are suffering very very complex scenario and yeah it's a uh, it's a really really tough situation to manage with this uncertainty but but yes uh, i i agree that in a normality we should be able to recuperate part of the of the of the margins that we have lost in this quarter thank you very very, very clear 
And the last question is, you know, if we talk about Q4, uh, next year, obviously, is going to be the year in which the huge labor inflation in Europe will have to pass through to clients. How confident are you of being able to, to pass through the labor inflation in Europe, which will be the first time in the case we have to yeah. pass through this, this, this huge okay. extra cost? It's it's very very difficult question because the my feeling is and during this the negotiations that we have had in this period with the customers uh, they refuse to apply any price increase due to the inflation. Okay, they okay. they consider that the they can uh, they should pay the raw materials because this is a commodity is coming and, and they pay the energy price at the beginning they they refuse but finally they they agreed and and this is generally agreed by all the OEMs because there is otherwise they they will destroy the supply chain so this is clear but the inflation that is the the complex thing to to pass through because they consider that we should uh, offset this with the with the efficiency gains and productivity gains internally. So, my if if you want to know my my request to all the the teams in 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 my businesses in Europe, what we have done is we have set an internal target to offset this this uh, inflation in labor and we should be able to to offset that that uh, impact through the growth in the business that are, that are growing or through uh, let's say social plans or 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 uh, let's say uh, firing uh, people in order to to increase our efficiency to to be able to to keep the margins okay so that's the the strategy there is no no way than than uh, resisting and improving internally to to offset those impacts on the inflation. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Enrique. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Nikhil Kare from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thanks for taking my question again. Uh, so just wanted to understand, so uh, again, going back to the Europe performance, uh, have we uh, seen any benefit because, uh, say, some suppliers are based out of Ukraine or Russia have been impacted? So are we kind of gaining market share because of uh, this kind of an impact? Uh, any examples of this? No, no, no not from from Russia or from Ukraine. No, we, we, don't, we have not seen this is impact or we, uh, we have not been benefited from production coming from Russia or, or Ukraine. No, not, it, it's not the case. We, what we have been benefited uh, in some small businesses is from some uh, small companies that has been, uh, are close to bankruptcy because of the special situation in the, in the European uh, market. Mm -hmm. So there is a consolidation there. So yes, we expect to see certain consolidation in the market because of the uh, of the bankruptcy, but from uh, European suppliers, not not uh, Russians or Ukrainian suppliers. Okay, got it, got it. And and just on the capex side, you I think mentioned that you're seeing really good demand in India, especially when you're looking at capex. So, uh, what is the uh, I mean the capex guidance uh, for this year? We would meet uh, say close to uh, the capex be close to 5.5 .5, uh, billion rupees for the full year on a consolidated basis. Yeah, in the capex in in global I think would be about 5% of our total turnover. That's the, okay. That's the the, yeah. the figure that we manage. Yes. Yeah, and that, that, that should continue uh, going ahead for the next year as well, right? That, that would be a safe assumption. That's right, yeah. Okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to participants to press star and 1 to ask a question. We have our next question from the line of Siddharth Dunt from Goodwill. Please go ahead. 
could you give me the, the, the German uh, PBT number of a German operations for three months, uh, for, the, for the quarter and nine months of Mahindra Fojin? Germany Fojin. PBT in Germany. Uh, wait a moment. No, I think uh, yeah. we don't have it uh, readily available, right? You know, uh, we will uh, share this PBT numbers uh, about the German business, uh, you know, uh, you know, at the year end. Uh, but what we can tell you in terms of uh, gross margin performance, it is, you know, more or less similar to what we have done in the earlier quarter uh, in, in Q2. Okay, but is it, a, is it at the PBT level, is it positive or negative? It is positive. No, no, it is not negative. Uh, you know, it, it will be around the zero mark. Even last year on a full year basis, it was something around that only. You know, about PBT zero, zero point five percent. So it will be something like that only. Okay. Okay. And uh, my second question is about the debt figure. So what would be the approximate debt figure now? And is it in India and Europe? And will interest rate have an impact over there? Okay, so the, uh, if you're asking about net financial debt, we are about 7.5 billion. Okay. And uh, yes, it will have an impact because margins, uh, the rates have gone up both in Europe and India, about yeah. 2%. Okay. And, but I think overall, if you see in our scheme of things, finance cost is not really significant. Okay, so 7.5 billion, you, that is around 750 crore rupees, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. And what's the split in India, Europe, about the debt? India would be about a billion. What India would be about a billion. So mostly it is uh, Europe uh, debt. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So if you want gross uh, numbers, it is actually you should, if you're looking for interest cost impact, uh, yeah, okay, you can look at NFD because we earn also, so that's okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, my next question is, uh, can India, so what is the India, you know, top line target by CY25 and can the margins reach like 17-18% like our parent margin for the India business? So, MCA India C25. Yeah. Yes, we, we have always had uh, internally the, the target to have the same margins in India than in, in the rest of CIE, okay, so mm. that is... Uh, Clear. Okay, we don't disclose long-term target uh, uh, in in our company, but uh, as a, a strategy or, or at least our wish in our in MCIE, yes, we would like to be there or above. Okay, so what we see clearly is that the growth in India will be higher than the rest of CIE markets and in the margins should as, as slowly but steadily should be able to to recuperate and to grow uh, to reach or let's say surpass uh, CIA margins yes uh, and growth and what are the growth targets for the india business around 15 percent no no we uh, we don't have uh, you know we don't have any such uh, target that we have set for ourselves what we normally say uh, normally work towards is whatever is the weighted average market growth we will grow maybe higher by 10% uh, than uh, than that you know earlier we used to say 5 to 10% now it will be closer to 10% will be higher than the weighted average market segment when i say weighted average market se segment we have a certain portfolio spread in India across four wheelers, two wheelers, tractors, and and trucks. So ba based on that weighted average, uh, you know we want to beat the market by say by 10 percentage points, uh, uh, you, as a general rule. Okay, yeah. and about the interest cost has gone up for us. And so uh, what was the cash pulling, uh, you know, deal that we had with CIA? Is the interest cost still 1.5 over there? No, it is always time increase. Yes. For the time being, okay. Uh, okay, I'll come back if I have any other questions. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Ankur from Kosar Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thanks. Uh, 
sir i had a question on growth uh, so considering the interest rate hikes worldwide uh, and the headwinds with the auto industry is going to face or is facing sir how do we think about growth because obviously our underlying business is linked to to the automotive industry so can you share some thoughts on you know how we will grow whether it will be uh, purely organic inorganic because organic growth it seems uh, to be difficult to come by no uh, no ankur as far as organic growth is concerned we uh, we don't think that at least in india that would be the case that we would not grow uh, and there also mentioned that uh, you know we have a lot of uh, medium to long term expectations from the indian market not just in mci but also our parent cie has that kind of expectations so we do expect the indian automobile market to grow of course in the uh, you know there there are certain headwinds that we know around inflation and around the geopolitical scenario and you know uh, expectation of recession in many places of uh, in in many countries but nevertheless we do believe that uh, the indian automobile markets in all segments will keep growing why we say that for example uh, you know the penetration ratios both in two wheelers tractors and four wheelers uh is much lesser compared to the global average in the case of four wheelers it is only 28 per 1000 which is much lower than even other emerging countries in tractors also believe that uh, the tractorization levels uh, there is a lot of scope for improvement in terms of uh, you know horsepower per hectare uh, two wheelers you know maybe only 50% of the households in india have two wheelers and two wheelers is a necessity so there is enough scope for growth uh, we also think that yes uh, there will be headwinds but uh, income levels will keep growing at uh, you know it could be at a reduced rate compared to what could have been if there was no such headwinds but nevertheless it will increase and therefore this combination of demand as well as income we do think that the medium to uh, long term in the indian automobile market will be good to answer your question around europe i think uh, and there did mention that the european market has come down to very low levels you know what used to be in the range of 20 million light vehicles per annum uh, you know today this year is probably in the range of 15.2 15.3 million it was 15.5 million in the year before it was 16 point, around 16 million the year before that in 2020 so mm-hmm. it is already at a very low level uh, compared to what it used to be uh, and uh, and therefore there will be some recovery at some stage even in the european market uh, because the base levels are very low so we are not ruling out organic growth at all we are quite you know we are quite hopeful as far as the organic growth is concerned as far as your in inorgan-